Heart, heart, heart issues. issues. Yes. Heart issues. So, Doctor Du Bois, would you answer that question? Yeah, Brian, it's it's, it's amazing because we don't we don't make any claims that Juice Plus treats or prevents or cures any disease state. But what our research is clear about is how Juice Plus significantly impacts those aspects of human physiology which are known to lead to disease and lead to premature aging. So if you look at the aspects of physiology associated with heart disease, things like oxidative stress, uh, homocysteine, spasm of the blood vessels, cholesterol metabolism, uh, it's, and, and silent inflammation that, that's there but you can't feel it. If you look at those aspects of physiology that are known to be associated with heart disease, Juice Plus has completed and published 30 separate manuscripts showing a positive impact on those aspects of physiology. So I think the trio is certainly uh, indicated for anybody who has heart disease. And I, I also think that it, uh, in some cases, people can take more than two capsules a day. So it's individual tolerance and individual choice, but uh, I recommend the trio for everybody, not only to reduce the risk of heart disease, but to maintain and help decrease the problem once it's already there. I know that you had recommended for me with my cancer to triple up on the dose because my immune system was so far behind and you have been spot on the entire time. I mean, I've been cancer free now for nine months and it's just, it's really pretty amazing how your body will heal itself once you repair that, that immune system. Congratulations on your full recovery. Thank you. Yeah. We had a question from the chat. It says, makes your cancer cells healthy. If you can get a chance, I start your voice. Does making a healthy body make everything inside your body, even um, cancerous cells? I'm not saying you, but should you eat junk food? And eat, But eating healthy foods don't stop you from slowing down the cancer growth? I'm not sure I understand the question, but junk food is never good. Uh, there's no, no human condition that benefits from poor nutrition. And at least theoretically, all known human conditions will benefit, benefit from good nutrition. And Juice Plus is certainly well documented to be good nutrition. Uh, and you're not feeding the cancer cells when, you, when you're feeding good nutrition into your body. Cancer cells are designed to grow and to spread and they don't use phytonutrients and antioxidants the way that normal cells do. So you're not, you're not promoting the bad guys. You're sustaining and improving not only your good guys, but your immune system to help fight the malignancy. Uh, the theoretical objection that antioxidants will somehow interfere with the effectiveness of chemotherapy and radiation has never been proven. It's never been substantiated. It's just a theoretical thing, and there's data accumulating that people who have good nutrition do far better with their chemo and their radiation than people who don't. So uh, I, I sincerely encourage excellent nutrition to anybody who's fighting cancer. Um, with heart disease, do you recommend the omegas to men too? And, and if so, how do you recommend them to them? Well, I don't understand the question. I recommend omegas to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, a lot of men fight back because when, you know, women are supposed to take omegas as they get older. So um, when you recommend the omegas to, I, I guess, specifically men, what, what do you target um, or tell them? Every cell in the body needs omega fatty acids. And the issue is whether, how you get them. And the normal American diet is loaded with omega-6s, far too many. The th really thick, heavy salad dressings, the cookies, the pastries, all of the junk food has omega-6s in them. We get too much omega-6. We need to increase especially the omega-3s. And our, and our omega blend has more omega-3 than it has anything else between the DHA and the EPA and the ALA. So we're doing the right thing with the omegas. Right now, we have not completed 
our research, our preliminary research on the Omega blend. We're working on it, and we're going to have that very shortly. Uh, but there is lots of research on the benefits of omega fatty acids uh, that's well documented across across several decades now. And the problem with what most people are taking is krill oil and fish oil. And there was one study that looked at, they took 35 different uh, brands of fish oil off the shelf. Every one of them was contaminated with PCBs because even though they've been banned in the U.S., PCBs have contaminated our oceans. And it's really a sad thing, but we can't get rid of that. It's there to stay. But you see, our Omega Blend uses algae. And our algae, and it uses all plant-based uh, sources, our algae is, con is our, our water. And it's controlled growth, so it's guaranteed no PCB is going to be in there. So it's it's we've got we've just got the top quality from the the pomegranate seed, the tomato seed, the red raspberry seed, the safflower seed, and and we're getting our our omega threes uh, from the same place the fish get it from the algae. But we control the algae growth. <coughs> we also have the sea buckthorn uh, fruit, which is uh, a misnomer because it's raised in in Nepal, the mountains of Nepal. Uh, not the not the sea, but it's been it's been there for centuries. There's there's stories there's there's archaeological evidence that Genghis Khan actually used safflower or the sea buckthorn to treat war wounds as a topical measure. So it's been there for a long time, and the value is well known. So everybody needs the omegas. Every cell in your body has a has a cell wall that needs to have. I mean, a cell membrane that needs to have. Uh, omega fatty acids. The, the key here is to get the quantities right and the quality right. And we wanted to have the full spectrum of, of fatty acids, the, the omega fatty acids, just like we have the full spectrum of antioxidants, the full spectrum of, of, uh, of uh, phytonutrients, the finest protein and the finest fiber you can put into your body, and probiotic and prebiotic. And now we had added the full spectrum of omega acids. And our mantra is minimally processed. So it's cold pressed, just like you would virgin olive oil. And it's not extracted by heat the way a lot of others are done. So I think everybody needs it. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to men of, of all ages. Um, so what do you say to um, medical professionals um, about Juice Plus and about the research. I recently had a conversation with a medical doctor and he looked at the research, um, but he came back and um, he appreciated the method of the research, but he said that the conclusion or the application of that, that research was too broad. What would you say to that? Well, everybody's got to come in from where they want to. We have uh, an impact score, a respectable impact score for medical literature is 10 to 15. Our impact score with our first 37 manuscripts is 110. Well, a respected research from around the world published in the finest journals of the subject, uh, nutrition journals, but also published in the Journal of American Coll College of Cardiology, published in Medicine, Science, Sports, and Exercise, which is the official journal of the uh, American College of Sports Medicine, the, the uh, College of peri, peri, uh, Perinatology, Periodontology, uh, the uh, official journal of the uh, Division of, of uh, GYN Oncology. So we have some of the finest journals in the world publishing our literature. It's all peer reviewed. All of it is statistically significant. And again, we're not treating disease or claiming to treat disease. We are impacting aspects of human physiology in the same way fruits, vegetables, grapes, and berries can do. And that's, that's why we do the research in the first place, because nobody would believe you could get the nutritional essence of 36 vine-ripened raw fruits, vegetables, grapes, and berries into capsules. So in order to prove that and to set ourselves apart from the supplement industry, we went ahead and did the research, and we continue to. We expect to have 10 more 
published manuscripts by the year 2020. So my, I have two questions. One, since we're talking about the omegas, I had a chiropractor say that he likes his omegas better because it had chondroitin in it. What's your response to that? Chondroitin usually comes from shark cartilage. Uh, it, uh, to my knowledge, it's never been shown to be beneficial. For example, when you have glucosamine and chondroitin, is the glucosamine more than anything else that seems to have benefit? And although I don't keep up with that literature all that closely, I have never seen benefit from chondroitin. And I wouldn't even, can't even understand why you'd want to put chondroitin into omega okay. fatty acid. Okay. But then, obviously he feels that way. Uh, why should flight attendants take Juice Plus? Well, I think it's real important for all flight crews to be aware of solar radiation. If you're, if you're flying at 30,000 feet and you go from New York to San Francisco, you get the equivalent of a chest x-ray every time you make that flight. If you go from New York to Athens, Greece, you get the equivalent of three chest x-rays. But if you do it during one of the solar storms when the satellites are bothered and the aurora borealis is so beautiful, that can increase by 20 fold. So you could get 60 chest x-rays on one flight, one, one flight from New York to Athens. And people that go from the US to Asia, think how much they're getting. So there's a lot of radiation exposure because that aluminum is not gonna stop the radiation. We don't make lead airplanes. It's aluminum, so <laughs> it, it's a real hazard. And I, I've got a, a little manuscript that, that kind of explains this that I promulgated before, but if anybody needs it again, we can send it out again. No, I just like to see that radiation thing. Okay. My husband is taking Juice Plus. He's a pilot and he flies a lot, but... Um, I know a lot of people who do fly, so I yep. just read up on that. Yeah, and that, that radiation is important, and we've got three published manuscripts showing reduction of DNA damage uh, by taking Juice Plus by as much as 66%. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's taking it daily, so. Good. Not the omegas, though, so maybe we can turn them off. Exactly. Anybody else? Wait, go back to that one question real quick. You said 60 chest x-rays from New York to Athens when what? When there's a solar storm. When the, the northern lights is real spectacular because those, those transoceanic flights do what they call great circle flights. So if you leave Atlanta and you want to go to Europe, you fly over Nova Scotia because that the great circle is the shortest route around the circle and the circumference of the globe. And in order to do that, you're getting closer to the North Pole. And that's where the, the radiation focuses. It's the same in this in the southern hemisphere as well. Um, so what do you say to people who have kidney issues or are on kidney dialysis? Can they take Juice Plus and is it beneficial for them? Yeah, and one of the things that happens with renal failure is homocysteine levels go sky high, well over 20. And we've got six studies that show Juice Plus can lower homocysteine levels. And high homocysteine is a risk factor for multiple diseases. So that's a bad thing for them. The uh, now, the thing about renal failure is the nephrologists are very concerned about phosphorus, they're concerned about vitamin A, and they're concerned about potassium. We have negligible amounts of, of phosphorus and of potassium, and we have zero of vitamin A. What we have on our label, with the, the FDA and the USDA wants us to say, by law, 
how much vitamin A is present. Well, we don't have any vitamin A in there. We have pro-retinol carotenoids. And your body will make vitamin A from those when you need it. But you're not getting preformed vitamin A, so you're not going to raise the levels. And if your body's got enough vitamin A, you will not convert the carotenoids into vitamin A. You take beta carotene, break it in half, and you've got two molecules of vitamin A. And your body can do that, but you won't do it until your body needs it. So that's a self-regulatory thing. So juice plus does not raise phosphorus, does not raise uh, potassium, and does not raise vitamin A levels. So, uh, and, the, and the kidney doctors monitor these levels all the time. So it's closely monitored, and I think there's plenty of reason why they should be taking juice plus. Mm -hmm. Could you ex expand a little bit on, on the kidney issue for people on dialysis? Well, I think I just did. I think they they have oxidative stress. They have high homocysteines. They have uh, probably a lot of the reason they have kidney failure in the first place is they have factors that can benefit from fruits and vegetables. Uh, for example, diabetes. As you know, we've got two studies that show that we decrease uh, insulin resistance. We decrease uh, glycohemoglobin, which are diabetic factors. So. Uh, there's lots of reasons why people who have kidney failure need the value of what Juice Plus has to offer. Thank you. Um, so I have uh, two people that I know. One has leukemia and one has a blood cancer. And I've spoken to uh, both of them about Juice Plus, and both of them were told by their doctor that they need antioxidant level low right now, and so doing something like this would raise their antioxidant level is not good, um, at least while they get through their chemo, because I guess with a blood cancer it's different. Would you agree to this, or how would you respond to that? No, I strongly disagree, but I'm not, I'm not, I cannot argue with the doctor's recommendation. But as I said earlier, the, the concept that antioxidants from whole food plant-based nutrition will interfere with chemotherapy and radiation therapy is totally theoretical. It's never been substantiated to my knowledge. And uh, I think just the opposite is true. There are studies that show that uh, some antioxidants can be beneficial to people and not harmful during rate, uh, cancer therapies. But again, we're not, uh, we're not arguing with a doctor-patient relationship. I would be interested to know um, how you were introduced to Juice Plus as a medical professional and um, why you decided to go with Juice Plus. I, I don't know your story. Okay. Uh, I started my practice when I got to Atlanta in 1968, and I did uh, general internal medicine in the office and consultative infectious diseases in the hospital because at that time, I, I think I was the first infectious disease practitioner to be in private practice in the world. And there weren't many of us around, and those that were tended to stay in academic settings uh, instead of private practice. So I was in the teaching hospital. We had plenty of hospital interns and residents. But everything changed in 1980 when HIV came along. So I, my practice became HIV more than anything else. We still did the rest of the infectious diseases stuff. But I pretty much no longer practiced internal medicine, but just infectious diseases. Well, during the 80s, we had no treatment for HIV. Uh, in fact, nobody knew what it was for five years. And uh, what I learned from my patients was those who had the best nutrition did the best with their HIV. There were years during the 80s when I lost over 300 patients a year, almost one a day. And I recommend, I didn't know anything about nutrition, <coughs> excuse me, but I started to recommend nutrition to my patients. I saw a benefit and then, uh, yeah, excuse me. 1995, 
an ophthalmologist recommended uh, me to look at Juice Plus, so I knew immediately. Here was concentrated uh, nutrition, micronutrition in capsule form. These patients desperately needed it. I'd learned a little bit about nutrition at the time, but <coughs> they had diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. They couldn't eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, let alone nine to 13, which is what they needed. So I started recommending Juice Plus to my patients and they couldn't buy them in the store. So, <coughs> excuse me, to facilitate that, I went ahead and became a representative right away. And uh, so I, I uh, became a sales coordinator in I think 30 days and I got stuck there for three years. <laughs> and it wasn't until Jan joined me in the business after an interesting convention in Genoa, Italy, that, uh, that we became successful with the business. But it was the ophthalmologist who first recognized value in Juice Plus. It was introduced in April of 1993 in San Diego. Uh, nobody knew what it was. They thought there was vitamins in an orange box. Uh, but... Uh, one of the NMDs took it back to Louisiana and introduced it to his ophthalmologist. And at the time, there was a publication that said vitamins A, C, and E would not reduce the incidence of macular degeneration. But a serving of spinach once a week reduced it by 44%. So he said, this has got spinach in it. It's valuable. Let's recommend it to our patients. So my uplines were ophthalmologists. And I, I, but I saw the value in it for general nutrition for sick patients. And I very quickly learned the value of it for all patients. So you didn't have to be sick to need Juice Plus. So that was that was how we got into it. And we're so glad you did. <laughs>
Uh, I was wondering what you would say to somebody who says the research is funded and published by Juice Plus because I, I feel like that if you want research done and you need the needs to get done and pay for it, but what what would you say to like a a naysayer or somebody who says, well, they paid for that? Well, we've we've got thirty eight published manuscripts. At least eight of them have not been paid for, not funded by the Juice Plus company. Even the National Institutes of Health funded research on Juice Plus without our permission. The uh, the study in Parma, the study in Milan. Uh, Two of the studies from, from uh, the, the Moore's Institute, all of those were paid for by themselves, not by the Juice Plus company. We don't publish it. In fact, the only, the only input we can have is to make sure they spelled our name and our address correct. It's, uh, the publication is purely up to the researchers. Our funding, by the way, does not go to the researchers. Our funding goes as an unconditional research grant to the institution which is doing the research, not to the researchers themselves. So it's, it's, uh, it's totally third party, it's hands clear, and there's always a uh, conflict of interest statement at the end of every, every publication that shows no conflict of interest. So uh, the, the only way research is done is if somebody pays for it, and nobody's gonna pay for fruits and vegetables in a capsule research. The pharmaceutical companies will pay big bucks for their drugs. So we're good, our research is clean. Thank you.